Okay, guys, welcome to um, week three in review. And week three was all about electrochemical cells. So electrochemical cells, this is an advance now on everything that you did in level two redox chemistry. And electrochemical cells is essentially the, the application of the redox chemistry that you've learned so far. Um, the first thing that we needed to teach you guys about electrochemical cells was some of the key terms and um, what they actually look like. So this is just going to write some key terms down here. You need to know what a half cell is. You need to know what an electrode is. You need to know that there's a voltmeter present. You need to know that there's a salt bridge. You need to know that um, you have an anode and the cathode, which are the two types of electrode that you can have. You need to know um, that oxidation occurs at the anode, and you need to know that reduction always occurs at the cathode. So then if we were to put this into a picture, um, a half cell tends to be a beaker, um, is what the container is made of. And then coming in that, contain, uh, that beaker, you have an electrode of some sort, and then from the top of the electrode, you'll have a wire, then a voltmeter to measure the E cell or the voltage for the uptake for the entire cell. And then you have your cathode um, on the right-hand side. So this side is referred to as your left-hand side, and this side or part of the electrochemical cell can be referred to as the right-hand side. Um, and this is a half cell, and this is the other half cell, and then together two half cells make up a full electrochemical cell. All right, so the next thing is you often are expected to um, label these electrochemical cell diagrams with all these key terms right here. Um, you have to take specific redox couples as an example read really, to teach this, and this is where the um, coverage of redox couples and the associated observations uh, was important for from last week in week two. Okay, so I'm just going to go with them um, two particular redox couples and I'm going to show you guys how you decide which redox couple goes on the left side or the left hand side half cell and which redox couple goes on the right hand side. So if we take the example of uh, the copper redox couple, so we're going to take a look now at standard reduction potential value. So standard reduction potential values. Okay, and the shorthand for such a big long thing is just E naught values. I'll try and explain everything now in a second. So standard E naught values, these are essentially um, values in volts which are measured against a standard um, hydrogen half cell under standard conditions. So I'll explain the standard end of things. Standard means that the voltage, so V for volts, the voltage of uh, the voltage of the redox couple, all right, is measured against the hydrogen half cell, which involves the reduction of H plus to H2 gas. So H plus is going to be in solution, and then hydrogen is a gas. Um, so standard means the voltage of the redox couple is measured against the hydrogen half cell um, at the following conditions, or under the following conditions. Standard conditions of 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere of pressure, and all solutions are one mole per liter. So you just memorize that that's what standard conditions are, and the hydrogen half cell, I covered the detail on how that actually operates in lessons, so if you want to see, again, a good diagram of the hydrogen half cell, just take a look at the PowerPoint, which is also posted here on Facebook. Um, so standard reduction potential values, or E0 values, are the voltage reading for a particular um, reduct, redux couple measured against the hydrogen half cell under standard conditions. So now you have a, a very comprehensive list of um, reduction potential values that you can get in your little um, 
book that you're given for the course and they're available online and essentially you'll have a list of redox couples which are ranked based on their E0 value. So I like to explain the E0 value or the reduction potential value as the potential. Get rid of that. So the potential for a species this is important. Species is singular in this case. So we're talking about one species out of a redox couple. So the potential for a species from a redox couple to be reduced. Right, this is how I like to describe E0 values. If you think of it like that, the higher the E0 value, the greater the potential to be reduced. And then if you take a look at a list of production potential values, you'll be able to try and identify which species is most likely to be reduced. So I just wrote down, to keep it really simple from my lesson, I just took the copper 2 plus copper redox couple. Its E0 value is plus 0.34 volts. Okay. And that would have been measured originally under standard conditions against the hydrogen half cell, and its E0 value is given a benchmark of 0 volts. And then if we take the zinc 2 plus being reduced to zinc solid, the, that redox couple, the reduction potential for that is minus 0 0.76 volts. Now you don't need to be worried about memorizing these numbers because they'll be given to you on an exam question. It's just a case of can you make sense of them and use them to answer um, questions in electrochemical cells. Okay, so with that knowledge understood now with um, reduction potential values or E0 values, we're going to return to our electrochemical cell that we originally drew. So I'm going to just highlight that and I'm going to redraw it now on a new page. So I'll take a new page and we're going to look at this electrochemical cell now again. Now the situation here is that we have to choose between copper 2 plus again being reduced to copper which had reduction potential or E0 value of plus 0 0.34 volts versus um, zinc 2 plus being reduced to zinc which had an E0 value of minus 0 0.76 volts. So hopefully it's obvious to the viewer here that um, the reduction potential of copper 2 plus, right? Um, I don't know what's up with my pen, let me just fix that. Reduction potential value of copper 2 plus is greater than the reduction potential value of um, Zn2 plus. So this means that if there's a choice between these two species, Cu2 plus or Zn2 plus, Cu2 plus will be the species which is reduced. So in our electrochemical cell, we have our electrode here, a voltmeter here and our electron on the right hand side, draw in your two half cells. Okay, the copper 2 plus species is the one which is going to be reduced in solution here. And then the zinc 2 plus would rather, and um, the zinc in this case would rather be oxidized. So essentially what happens is this would prefer to go this way and this would prefer to go this way. So this tells you straight away that um, oxidation is going to occur with this species and reduction is going to occur with this species. So straight away I know the copper 2 plus can be written in solution here. So you'll have some source of copper 2 plus like copper sulfate aqueous. That can give us our copper 2 plus ions. And then as the copper 2 plus is reduced, just get a different color now. So we can try and go with a brown. You'll get copper solid starting to form on your electrode. And we make this electrode copper as well because one of the species is solid at room temperature and pressure, so we can use that to make the cathode. So the half equation, the reduction half equation here is Cu2 plus aqueous plus two electrons being reduced to copper solid, and that is what's happening in your right-hand side half cell or at the cathode. So reduction happens at the cathode. Similarly, or in opposite sense, um, we have oxidation. So I'll just do oxidation in red. Oxidation at the anode. So we can use a zinc solid electrode here because, again, one of the species in the couple is solid at room temperature and pressure. So why not use it? 
and then the zinc is being oxidized to Zn2 plus and that is in solution as well and the oxidation half equation then is going to be Zn solid and that's being oxidized to Zn2 plus plus two electrons species state symbols aqueous and that's a solid so that happens oxidation always happens at the anode now we're going to have a flow of these electrons so if oxidation happens at the anode the flow of those two electrons essentially here will be from left to right through the voltmeter will give you a reading in volts off your voltmeter as it uh, comes to the other side now as you can see with that color you guys know from simple electronics that you must have a complete circuit in order for a current to flow so in this case we have electrons starting here as they're oxidized in the anode they go through the voltmeter and they come around to the other electrode the cathode but there's no completion across this broken path so this circuit will not actually run and if you set your electrochemical cell up like this initially you'll get zero reading or zero volts in your voltmeter so what we need to do just to make this electrochemical cell work and this goes for all electrochemical cells is that you need to add what's called a salt bridge so I'm going to just add a salt bridge now I'll use a different color so I'll use a green so a salt bridge can be either a glass tubing or it can be just a bit of filter paper which is soaked in a simple ionic solution like potassium nitrate seems to come up again and again on exam questions but there's no reason why you couldn't use something like <coughs> copper sulfate um, uh, calcium carbonate or anything any ionic solution you just don't want the species to be the same as the ones which are involved in the electrochemical cell now, just to discuss the purpose of the salt bridge then so with the salt bridge salt bridge so it's an ionic salt in solution which bridges the gap between the two half cells and chemically completes the circuit okay so chemically completes the circuit now uh, the, the rule to remember here so if we potassium nitrate the cation always goes to the cathode or the right hand side and the anion goes to the anode side and the idea here in this example if you have um, if I just scroll back up for a second through get rid of that go away so through oxidation of the Zn solid here you get an increase in positivity on the left hand side and you want to neutralize that positivity from by by using the um, the anion which goes to the anode so the additional Zn2 plus from oxidation of Zn solid will be neutralized by nitrate ions from the salt bridge and on the same note the excess if I scroll back up again the you're now forming um, or you're reducing the concentration of copper 2 plus so you're reducing the positivity on the right hand side so therefore you must replace that loss in positivity so the concentration of Cu2 plus ions is decreasing and you replace that with the cation from the salt bridge which is potassium in this case just to chemically complete the circuit and keep everything neutral so that's the purpose of a salt bridge this movement of um, cation and anion and also this flow of electrons through the circuit is a common question which comes up and is as a kind of part C on electrochemical cells so it's a real excellence type of understanding so that is the basic overview for electrochemical cells I also talked about uh, reduction potential values and the last thing I just hinted on or tip touched on um, towards the end of the week was this idea of writing cell diagrams so I'll just do a brief a brief overview of the rules for writing cell diagrams so writing cell diagrams now I just put diagram in inverted commas because it seems strange that you write a diagram uh, intuitively you would think that you draw a diagram but for redox chemistry a written cell diagram is as follows okay so to understand how to write cell diagrams there's a couple of symbols that you need to know what they represent so the first one I'm going to start with is just a simple forward slash 
So forward slash represents a change in phase, phase change. Now, um, some students asked me during lesson, did this have to be, for example, a phase change between zinc solid and Zn and zinc ions? Okay. Now, it doesn't have to be the same redox couple for it to be a phase change. There is a phase change, for example, if you have platinum solid and Fe2 plus ions because platinum is a solid phase and Fe2 plus ions are in the aqueous phase. So in both cases, you would represent that phase change with a forward slash. All right. Now I'm just going to get a new page for this because I need more space. So continuing with the writing cell diagrams. So forward slash represents a phase change. Now the typical phase changes you'll come across in electrochemical cells would be from a solid um, electrode into an aqueous solution or you may have a gaseous version of one of the redox species. So in either case, you would need to use a forward slash for all those phase changes. Uh, the next symbol we use in the writing cell diagram is the salt bridge, which is represented by two forward lines. So that represents the salt bridge. And the other piece of um, um, symbols or type of symbol that we need to use is the comma. So the comma is for if both species in the redox couple are actually in the aqueous phase, then you just put a comma between the two species. All right. So what I'm going to do now is the best way to explain cell diagrams is to actually take a look at an example. And um, so if I do the cell diagram for the copper and the zinc electrochemical cell that we've been describing, so I'll quickly redraw the electrochemical cell as a proper picture. Okay, so we had a zinc solid electrode here, we had a copper solid electrode there. In solution we had Zn2 plus ions aqueous. We had in solution here Cu2 plus aqueous ions. Okay, we also had the salt bridge which I'll just draw in, in a different color. Maybe not that. I didn't think. Okay, salt bridge was here. All right, so here's how you do the cell diagram. I'll just pick a different color. Let's do it in green. Right, so the first, very first thing we encounter is the zinc um, electrode. Okay, now we don't encounter the Zn2 plus ions because that's not what starts where the, where the reaction actually starts. The electrons start or originate at the zinc electrode because that's, that's where they are stripped from in that oxidation reaction. So you write down your zinc, it's a solid, you now have a change of phase between the zinc solid electrode and the zinc ion. So we put in one forward slash. Then we have Zn2 plus. So it's now being oxidized, aqueous. Then we have the salt bridge. So I'll match that up with the pink again. So there's your salt bridge. Then we're on the other side. I'll just use a different color for the reduction side. So let's use blue. Now on the reduction side, the first species that the electrons encounter will not actually be considered the uh, electrode, but it will be considered the Cu2 plus. And then you go change of phase again, and you come into the copper solid. So that's quite straightforward for the zinc and copper um, electrochemical cell. That's the proper way to write the cell diagram for that particular electrochemical cell. So the best way to learn how to do electrochemical cells is to practice a lot. And if you look at the Facebook page, there is a electrochemistry and its worksheet number um, number five. And if you guys look through the questions, the answers are up there as well. And just practice writing cell diagrams, and you'll get them pretty quick. Okay, so that's week three in review. Now, coming into next week, we're going to quickly review how to draw, sorry, how to write cell diagrams again. And then we're going to take a look at the use of E naught values um, to work out whether a reaction is spontaneous, which means will occur by itself naturally, or is not spontaneous, which is a chemical reaction, a redox reaction, which would not actually occur. Okay, and that's the view for week four.